No matter who you are or where you live, if your passion is hunting, then make your dreams come true. Join us on a great safari and adventure as we traverse five continents in search of world's finest hunting trophies. Join the best professional hunters in the world in search for the best trophy animals. You will experience unforgettable hunting adventures and international cultures that few people on earth get to know. Share the thrill of the ultimate challenge to promote the sustained use of world's greatest renewable resources, wildlife conservation, and fair chase hunting. Feel the excitement, share the passion, join the experience of the ultimate adventure that this world has to offer. Let safari season take you there. In today's episode, we will participate together in a safari that takes place in South America, the continent where hunting all endemic wildlife is forbidden. On the contrary, hunting all imported animal species is allowed. The country we are about to visit is Argentina. The biodiversity that is typical to this country is not inherent to any other. And these high mountainous ridges separate it and create prerequisites for versatile climate regions. The western part of the country is home to animals such as penguins, llama, foxes, and guanaco, and the southern to pumas, wild bears, elephant seals, sea lions. This is the country of natural riches with beautiful waterfalls, green fields, and high mountaintops. The subtropical northern regions of Argentina are being inhabited by numerous animals, such as puma, ocelot, jaguars, as well as various kind of monkeys, dogs, versatility of reptiles, crocodiles, turtles, and tortoises. You could also see wolves, anteaters, cats, foxes, and deer. You will find subtropical plants as well as grazing lands typical to the savanna spacious areas. The development of stock breeding and agricultures is the main reason for the local farmers to rear and introduce hunting species in nature that have been imported from Europe, Asia, and Africa. Another hunting adventure, namely the seventh in a row for me and the renowned bow hunter Gary Bogner, was ahead of us. We made ourselves comfortable in the house of several generations of farmers that used to rear huge cow herds and at present were producing corn, soya and other GMO crops. Argentina is leader in that area and all leading companies such as Monsanto, Pioneer, DuPont and others grow at its territory their own production that is mainly exported for China and Japan. Our host Gonzalo was hereditary farmer, but his passion for hunting and wildlife made him undertake the adventurous life of professional hunter. We were located at some 400 kilometers from Buenos Aires, near mountainous range. The 1,200 meter high highlands were amongst the highest mountains in a range of six hour travel. We were impatient to undertake hunting, but everything bides its time. The first and foremost prerequisite for the successful hunt of bow hunter is being confident in the precision and setup of his weapon. The successful shots at the aim are necessary not only to the hunter. What it takes is win over the trust of professional hunter to be able to look for shooting environment that is adequate in view of hunter's capacities. Gary Bogner is one of the best bow hunters worldwide. Distant hits are taboo to most bow hunters because of the difficulties encountered when stretching the Titan bowstring. This is not a problem to the dinosaur, the way he calls himself. The daily training sessions with a heavy bow have turned his muscles into machine that many young hunters could dream of. They always do that. You want to give me one of yours? And I measure for you. Well, do you have binoculars? Yes, I do. Okay. I have them built right into the binoculars. The same evening we went hunting while going around our hunting region. It was a very beautiful and colorful place. We were about to hunt red deer, axis deer, fallow deer, as well as black buck. Later on, we were about to try our luck in hunting water buffaloes. We were about to look for some of the largest wild inhabitants of the savanna. A real pest for farmers. The large animals do not respect fences and enclosures and they pass through them all while leaving devastated fields and orchards behind. The same problem was encountered by our hosts when it comes to boars. Both animal species were very dangerous to hunt. 
Statistics when it comes to lethal and fatal injuries inflicted by wild animals during hunting shows boars and buffaloes being amongst the most dangerous pampas inhabitants. It was my pleasure feeling the summer breeze coming from the open windows while thinking of the snow hell that had captured Bulgaria at that time. We saw many animals. The location was convenient for stalking performed by bow hunter because there were many low rocky sections to cover up. From great distance, it looked like barren and open area, but while sneaking amongst these hollows up in the mountain, it was possible to approach them at sufficient distance for shot produced by a bow. Deer roaring was in its peak. Heat made them keep silent throughout the day, and it was only early in the morning and in the evening when they started resounding the mountain with their voices. The evening proved fruitless to us because we could hear their roar on rare occasions and long distances. The large group of water buffaloes was watching us with great interest, while Gonzalo was taking a look for a big bull. On several occasions, we saw black bucks that were jumping graciously in the grass while rapidly running away from us. Several llamas were grazing calmly on the left of the road. Tens of cows and calves were gazing at us while we were passing by. But there is no nice deer. We spend, we have lunch there at the ranch and we come back late afternoon. That's the, the plan. Okay, we go here in this area, we go for red deer, um, axis deer, black buck. Okay, all here? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, then next week we move to our family ranch. I mean, where the, remember the, the castle, yeah. the European castle? Um, so that's the second part of the, of the hunt. Of the, so at 5 p.m we continue until night. Here we go. First full day, a new day. Service? I had uh, one thing at lunch, it downloaded two emails. While we were touring by the car, we managed to localize several small deer herds. There were no large trophy animals among them. The old forest kings ruled over larger herds with females, and usually grandiose battles were fought for these herds, away from roads and human eyes. If we wanted to stalk a large deer, we had to undertake long march in order to find the herds amidst the forest. After two-hour difficult march, we located a herd where there were at least three large trophy bulls. The sun was high above, and the animals were getting prepared for rest amidst the tree shadows. We had to be patient if we wanted to shoot down a nice trophy animal. We had to wait in the tree cover-up until deer started moving around. Otherwise, neither favorable wind nor masking costumes were about to help us. The animals could see our unclear silhouettes, but until they had no idea of our nature, we were about to be safe or rather undercover. There are two deer near our position, and one of them looked younger, but with many points. The better trophy animal, namely the older one, was further away, but maybe it was about to come closer or stand in more convenient shooting position. When it comes to bow hunting, the most important thing is to be patient. After Gary's precise shot, the herd realized the secretive silhouettes in the forest were hunters. All deer started running through the meadow, fleeing away from us. Once again, patient and precise shooting of the experienced hunter brought hunting to happy ending. The whole shooting passed in an angled manner through deer's body. 
It probably injured essential organs such as lung and heart. Very good shot, man. Long shot. Long shot. Well done, Gary. The shot produced in the lung usually proves lethal. It's always something. And the animal makes not more than 300 to 400 meters. There may be some complications when it comes to finding the animal if terrain is cross-cut and overgrown with plantation. The difficulties are due to the fact that bleeding has no external effusions in the first minutes until the internal cavity gets full. Thus, no bloody traces are left until the animal gets weak because of internal blood loss. Fortunately, the terrain there was open and we found the large animal relatively easily. Furthermore, we had bloodhound. We, we got really, really lucky and uh, we found a beautiful free ranging stag. He's probably about eight years old and made a, a fairly good shot on him and he went about 75 yards or so. It was a lung shot. And I'm really, really happy. Uh, the rut is just getting going here. Probably in another week or so, they'll really be roaring. But uh, 80 degrees doesn't do much, uh, as you, my elk hunter friends and red stag friends know. But things came together, and uh, the thimble luck to a pound of skill, as they say. <laughs> We loaded the large animal in the car and headed back home. It sounds incredible, but all you could see here is possible thanks to human cares and results from many years of diligent work. We were about to hunt at an area of 20,000 hectares. Three years, the grandfathers of Gonzalo used to raise soy, corn, and cattle in the vast forest planted personally by Gonzalo's predecessor a hundred years ago. That, uh, green area is hard. Mm -hmm. you, know, you will see. A couple like that style, that was La Reta style. He liked to make that chimney. So imagine all these woods 